So if you remember, we had this idea uh, of the critically stressed earth, right? And this sort of, it's an idea that the, the whole crust of the earth is in this sort of incipient state of failure, sheer failure. And that puts a limit on the magnitude of the difference in principal stresses. Uh, or you can, you can use that uh, and along with more Coulomb criterion to come up with that. So if we, you know, if you remember what we, what we wrote for that was that, in a, at least in a normal faulting regime, then your limit would be something like the effective vertical stress over uh, SH max. The effective SH, ma I'm sorry, the effective ma uh, horizontal maximum horizontal stress, not not the effective horizontal stress is equal to this guy. Okay, ah, sorry, minimum for normal faulting. This would be minimum SH minimum. Okay. <coughs> And so, if we just basically now plug in the effective in terms of SV and the pore pressure, and then we look at an increment change, right? We look at an increment change in pore pressure with respect to an increment change in SH min, then we get these two equations. And if we then simplify that, solving for a change in pore pressure, uh, you know, solving for our parameter A, which Zobat calls A, right? Then you get this guy, and then if you just plug in a value for the internal friction angle, remember, I'm sorry, this is not this is not internal friction. This is this is friction on a fault, right? This this idea comes from the critically stressed Earth, you know, uh, theory. And so this is these are this is not internal friction rather, but actual friction on faults, okay? And so then if you plug in the value, and remember what we said about friction, it's always 0.6, right? At least that's the rule of thumb. We, all, we always we tend to always use that unless we have a good reason not to. And so if you then plug that in, then you get this parameter A is equal to 0.67. So this is sort of the critical value, okay? Above, if A is above this value, then it's going to promote normal faulting. So you could derive the same thing for reverse faulting and static slip faulting. Um, yeah, okay. So not strike slip, right? But reverse faulting, you could derive the same. In strike slip, the poor, the uh, strike slip, the you'd have sh min over sh max over sh min. The pore pressure wouldn't show up. Um, So then if we go back to look at this, that that is what is sort of indicated by this line. I didn't explain that before. But here is A equals 0.67. And then if you go back again and you look at the case study of these fields, sure enough, these guys all experience normal faulting. So while there's lots of assumptions, uh, they tend to hold pretty well. So then there's this idea, or, or uh, Zobak introduces this idea of the reservoir space plot. Right? So this is S3 is a function of pore pressure. And then here's this 0.6 normal faulting line. And the, the direction you go, I mean, the slope of this guy is A. Okay, the slope. So if you initially have a pore pressure in a reservoir of 50, right, and then you need then you know what A is, and you just draw a line, and that's going to tell you whether you're essentially going to, through production, you're going to run into uh, issues with faulting or not, right? So in this case, A, the slope of this line is 0.4, and there's no issue with faulting, right? So you're going to just, as you deplete the reservoir at that slope, you're always going to stay above this line, and therefore you're never going to have any trouble with faulting. 
However, if you're producing along this slope and you hit the line, then you're going to promote normal faulting. And of course, once faulting occurs, you're just going to continue to slip on those same faults. So after, after faulting occurs, then, you, then you're going to essentially produce that, or you know, A is going to become, it's going to take the slope of the friction on the fault. 